Hello guys, thanks for coming back again if you are subscribed. If you are yet to subscribe, please you need to subscribe to this channel. Click on the subscribe button and also on the bell beside it. That will be notified when we drop our new video. We are going to bring more videos on the Y2021 practicals. Just anticipate for that. And also, we will also make videos for advanced courses in math, physics and chemistry. Just subscribe to this channel and get the series of videos. So in this video, we want to talk about Y2021 chemistry practical. And the first one, vibration. We are also coming for the second one, which is qualitative analysis. Just to participate in. So we are going to start with a question that says, A is a solution. So we have solution A here. So this is solution A, containing 3.8 gram of HCl per dm cube. So that is the the amount in gram of HCl that is present in that solution per dm cube. So B is a solution of XOH. So we don't know which type of base it is, maybe NaOH, maybe KOH, or CA, or what, but definitely to be between KOH and NaOH, right? So uh, containing 4.8 gram per dm cube. So that means this salt 4.8 gram was split in one dm cube. So now put A into the bread. So we're going to do that by putting the acid into the bread. And type it against 20 or 25 centimeter cube of B. That is the volume of pipettes, depending on the one you have. And we have 25 volume of pipettes here. So we are using 25 centimeter cube. So now using methyl orange equation, indicator rather. So the best indicator to use in this case is methyl orange. Reason being that the reaction is taking place between a strong acid and a strong base. So the best indicator is methyl orange in this context. So let's move on. Recall the volume of A, which completely reacts with B. That means after the end of the reaction, that is color change, will notify us when the end point is reached. So when we, we're going to repeat the procedure of consistent values. So thereafter, from our results, we do some calculation. So let's see how the practical goes, please. So now let's see how the experiment will go. The first thing we need to do according to the procedure is to refill the burret with the acid and that is A as you can see. So we have the funnel here to perform such function. So we put that acid into the burret and don't allow that to pour in order not to dilute your solution. Uh, you know, apart from that, uh, there are some other precautions you need to take like Ensure that after filling the burette, you remove the funnel from it so that will avoid uh, topping up your burette while you titrate. And at the same time, don't rinse this conical flask with any solution it's meant to contain, either acid or base. It is better to rinse it with water and allow it to drop or dry. So then rinse the pipette with the solution it's meant to pipette. If you rinse with water, the solution will be diluted further. Also, rinse the acid with the, uh, the burette with the acid. So it won't be diluted further. So, uh, so let's move on. So we are meant to fill it up to zero. So I think it's up to the marked point, which is zero now. So that is for A. So we can dispose this. So you look at the lower many scores to take your measurement to know that it's exactly zero. So then you go ahead to measure your base. Until it's reached the mark point, then you leave. This is 25. Okay, that is it. So we put that here. Then thereafter we had our indicator, which is methane orange. Sorry, excuse me. So if I take that, having this, thank God it's not broken, that's fantastic. Anyway, so let's do this. One, two drop. If it is visible enough, we can add three drops, sorry. Okay, let's move on. So then we have this. Let's titrate now and anticipate for the color change. So it's going. So 
so let's keep but we need to careful we need to be careful since this is the first equation so we'll be able to know the range of points where we're going to have uh, the color change so at the point you can see that the color is trying to change here so i'm being careful in adding what i'm adding so hmm. okay i think it has changed properly now so this is the new color font so at the end of the day let's take our reading so the reading here says 28.60 so i have the initial which i started with 0, 0.00 it has to be in two decimal places so i have 28.60 let me take the reading once again okay that's 28.60 directly so when I subtract this, I'm still going to have 28.60. And don't forget this already in centimeter cube. So now, let's move on to the next titration. That is, we have to refill the burette again because we cannot get to another 28 from 50 since the burette is calibrated in 50. Suppose it's less than 25 or 25, we can still proceed to the second titration it's already filling the burette. So now let's refill the burette with the acid once again. Let's refill the burette with the acid once again. So then we can take our readings to zero. I would love to always start from zero because this helps to reduce error. So I prefer starting from zero again. So I think this is not held very well. So let's just adjust back to zero. Okay, let's go in on a lower men's course. So we need to add a little drop. Just a drop thereabouts. Okay, I think it's up to zero now. So we dispose this, then pipe it another base. So this is acid. Don't mix it up. This is level. So now we move on to pipe it this again. So then you adjust until it reaches the marked point. Wow, sometimes it can be annoying. So that's it, the lower meniscus. Then let's go for the second titration. So for the second titration, let us add the methyl orange indicator so that's three drop for it to be visible enough so now let's go so i know the range of the first titer now so when doing the titration now i will just need to be careful once i'm getting or approaching 28 so i should be careful at that point so but i can still press add before then. So once approaching 27, 28, I should be very, very careful. Okay, it's approaching 28 now. So, wow, the color change again. Exactly, I have 28.6 again. So that is fantastic because the differences between your answer should not be more than 0.2, that is plus or minus. At the end of the day, if you want to know if the experiment is accurate and okay, the differences must not be more than 0.2. Fantastic. So here I have 0.00 and I have 28.60 again. So this gives me 28.60. So then let's proceed to this third titration or the last one, which is 0.00. So now let's move to the next titration. So now let's move to the next titration. So which means we are going to go for the last one. So let's titrate. Let's move on.
So I have twenty-eight point twenty-eight point five. 28.5, so that is what I have. 28.5, so let's go. 28.5 zeros, and that gives us 28.50. So these are the three values we have for the three titration we have performed. So then, can we use this value now to calculate our VA? VA, which is the average volume of acid use, and that will give us 28.60 plus 28.60 plus 28.50 all divided by 3 can we compute that and know our answers let's see so now the value gives us 28.60 plus 28.60 plus 25.50 so and that eventually gives us uh, 82.7 uh, that will be divided by 3 so that's divided by 3 we have uh, 27.55 okay let me compute again 28.60 plus 28.60 plus 25.50 sorry 28.50 0.50 so and that gives us 85 rather right? so because i made a mistake calling it 25 so it should be 85.7 so if i divide that by 3 i should have 28.56 so which means i'm having my va which is a tighter value to be 28.56 actually it's supposed to be 57 so let's make it 57 because um, having six 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 seven, so I can actually approximate that. So that would be centimeter cube. So that is our tight value. So from there, we were told to calculate the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. Don't forget, the concentration of B is the concentration of the base. So using C A B A all over C B B B equals N A over N B. We will be able to calculate the concentration. We are told that CA, we don't know our CA, but take a look at this. To find CA, you can easily use a mass concentration over molar mass. And the mass concentration of A is 3.8 in 1 dm cube. So we are going to have 3.8 all over the molar mass of HCl is 36.5. So if we are to compute that now, we're going to have 3.8 over 36.5. So that gives us 0 0.104 mole per dm cube. So that is the concentration of the acid. So thereafter, then we go ahead to calculate our CB. So CB, to calculate CB, we have CA now to be... 0.104 VA, which is this, is times 28.57 all over CB, we don't know, but CB times VB, which is volume of 5x, so that's 25, all equals the number of moles in the equation is 1 ratio 1, since it is um, actually we have made a mistake here and this is supposed to be x AOH, so and this is supposed to be x acl don't worry we know where we are going but we can actually make it you know fantastic that we can get what we're talking about so at the end of the day we're gonna have this so and that will be one over one since the ratio is one to one so what next let's multiply these two we have 0 0.104 times 28.57 Anyway, that gives us 2.971. So we have 2.971 all over 25 CB all equals 1 over 1. So which means we're going to have 25 CB equals what? 2.971. So the concentration of the base will be when you divide this by 25. So 2.971 divided by 25. So and that gives us 
zero point one two approximately anyway it's supposed to be zero point one one eight in three decimal place eight eight or whatsoever that's eight nine in three decimal place all bar dn cube but actually I'm saying it is approximately equals to zero point one two mole bar dn cube. So that is the concentration of B. So we can also find the molar mass of B with what we have done. So let me get rid of this side so we can find that. So in order to find the molar mass of B, in order to find the molar mass of B, we are told that uh, the concentration, or let me call it molarity, that is molar concentration, molarity is equal to mass concentration over molar mass. So and we were told in the question that 4.8 gram of, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, 4 point containing Okay, B containing is a solution containing 4.8 gram in one gen cube. So which means the mass concentration is 4.8. And we just determine the molarity, which is CB, that is concentration. CB is what we mean by molarity. So if that is 0 0.12, we can slot that here, 0 0.12 all over, then the molar mass, let me call that M dot M. So which means 0 0.12 M dot m is the same thing as 4.8 so the molar mass will be equal to 0 0.12 sorry the molar mass will be equal to 4.8 all over 0 0.12 so if we compute that we're going to have 4.8 all over 0 0.12 Actually, that gives me a straight answer, and that is 40 gram. Don't forget, molar mass is measured in gram per mole, so we have gram per mole. 40 gram. Good. So now, if that gives us 40 gram, we were meant to determine the relative atomic mass of X. You know, don't forget, this, the uh, compound is XOH. Oh, sorry, excuse me. The compound is XOH, and since the molar mass is 40 grams, so XOH is 40 gram, and don't forget that H is equal to 1, O is 16, those are the ones we need. So then we have how many O here, that is just 1, how many H, that is 1, so which means X plus 16 plus 1 equals 40. So which means X plus 17 equals 40, and then X will be what? 40 minus 17. So which means X is 23 gram or molar relative atomic mass doesn't have units, so it's 23. So which means the molar mass, the relative atomic mass of X is 23. Then we're meant to name the elements. IB. We're meant to name the elements. So what elements, which element has the relative atomic mass of 23? That's good. Yeah. So which means X is Na. So good. Good. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free. Thank you. And anticipate for more videos based on this work practical and for advanced courses. Thank you.